everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're going to be working on Mardi Gras masks. Yes! Woohoohoo! So I'm excited about this one. I mean, Mardi Gras is maybe going on right now. I'm not sure. It's supposed to go through until Easter, I guess. That's how Mardi Gras works. At least that's how I known it to work. <laughs> Anyways, I have an index card here, and we're going to make our mask, but we have to draw it out first. So right here, I've you know, I folded this index card in half and I'm kind of just giving myself a few options here. I had the nose area where I've got a line that draws up where it's kind of curved. And then the other one I thought, well, I can make it just straight across without no point. But I decided I wanted a little bit of the curve really all the way around. So we're going to take that curve at the bottom and I'm going to cut up with my scissors going around and into a point. And this way then, when you open this up, it's gonna be nice and curved all the way around. I'm gonna draw in my eyepiece right there. And you know, this is, you know, you just have to kind of just go ahead and, you know, take some index cards and draw it out. If you don't like the first one, try it again. You'd be surprised at how many different little masks you could come up with just doing this. So anyway, I started cutting with my X-Acto knife on that first eye, that eye area. And then once I kind of have this kind of figured out, I'll pop that out. And then since I had cut down so hard, there's a little bit of a line here that kind of went through where I cut onto the other um, side of the index card. And so it should mimic the other eye area. And there you have your mask. Okay, so once you have this template, you're gonna bring in pop cans. Yes, I have been waiting to bring this. Oh my goodness, I can't tell you. I mean, this is my utility knife, right? I'm just cutting right up the center, and then I'm bringing in a pair of scissors. This thing I know is probably dull as the day is long, <laughs> but it's only because I've been cutting pop can tin for I don't know how long now, <laughs> a long time. Um, and I finally got a project here I could bring this about. So anyway, I'm cutting this, and then I'm gonna cut the main area out so my top and my bottom those are gonna go away recycle them that's great but hold on to the center part of the pop can now I just need to go ahead and forewarn you guys this is gonna get sharp okay when you're cutting this pop can tin that edge is super sharp so if you have little kiddos around that want to do this kind of a thing moms dads whoever's the the adults in the room please go ahead and do this for them first. And then also just kind of watch because even when you cut this mask out out of the pop can tin, it is sharp on those edges. You can round it out like I'm doing here. I kind of curl it with my hands um, around that, um, the middle center part of that pop can tin. But be careful when you go to cut this out because it is super sharp. Anyway, I am taking my Sharpie marker and I'm tracing out my mask form on the pop can tin um, all the way around and then also doing the little eye air openings as well. Now, once I have that done, I'm gonna bring in my dull type scissors that I've already cut this tin in and I'm gonna cut the entire mask out and that way then I'll have it all set. Notice here again, I'm trying to round that tin out so I have some control of it a little bit so it doesn't just naturally curl up on me because it definitely will. Anyways, I'm cutting around this thing and then once I get the actual mask form in the pop can tin cut out, I'm gonna take a needle tool. Um, you can use an X-Acto knife too, but I do believe I use my needle tool to kind of make a little hole right where the eye openings are gonna be. And then when I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a smaller needle, needle point kind of scissors. And yes, it is going to dull the scissors. So set aside like two pairs of scissors <laughs> in this regard. One, okay, I'm even using a utility knife here. Um, one, so you can do the more fine detailed areas where you want to cut. And then a bigger scissors for cutting the main form. Okay, now that I have my mask cut, and I just decided to measure, this was like about a four by 
two inch kind of mask. So it's small, but not mini, 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 right? And I'm taking my X-Acto knife here and I'm using the rod of that knife to kind of give myself a nose piece on this mask, giving a little bit of a three dimension. So when you do this, play with this a little bit. You're gonna be messing with pop can tin. I suggest saving up a few pop cans because it takes a little bit to figure out how to form that pop can tin into the mask you really want. So it's a little bit of practice. That's okay though. Just, uh, you know, save up a few of those pop cans and have some fun with it. Okay, so now let's add in the clay. And this is really, oh, I love this. This is my scrap clay. I have rolled this thing out on a number six setting on my Atlas pasta machine. I'm betting, and I didn't, I, you know, I haven't tried it, but I think you could go even thinner. You could go down to a seven or even an eight on your um, pasta machine and get this fairly thin and then put this over the top of that tin foil piece. Now, the reason why I can get away with this and notice right here, I'm ripping that clay right off of the mask. I'm not even using a blade, right? It's so thin, it'll rip right off. And then I like to just push into the eyeball areas and that will come right off as well. And generally it'll form right around where you have cut. So you don't have to worry about using a blade or anything. So just rip away all the rest of the clay right here and punch it out through the eye hole areas and then just form it up to the way you like it the best. Now, as you can tell here, I'm bringing in another piece of clay and I'm backing on the back part of this mask. And again, I'm gonna punch out through the eye holes and rip away the excess of the clay that's on the mask. Now, when I do this, I, I will bring in for sure my X-Acto knife or my blade to trim up the mask entirely. So around all the outside edges and right where the eye holes are, I'll go ahead and cut out, you know, I'll rip that out first and then I'll bring in my X-Acto knife or my blade, whichever fits best, it's generally the X-Acto, but I'll trim up any excess clay right around the edges. The one thing I did not mention was how to attach this thing onto our rod or our stick or this mask onto that. And the first way I do is this right here. Before you put the clay on, you could do this where you go ahead and puncture two holes so that you're going to be able to use wire to attach your a mask onto your, your uh, stick. But if you don't do it there, you can also do it right where you already have the clay into it, and then you put the holes into the mask. Frankly, I like putting it on the mask or punching the holes through before I attach any clay whatsoever. So that was just a little something I forgot to mention to you guys. After you have those holes punched into your mask, bake the mask. So right here, the mask is already baked. It's all baked up. Now we're gonna take some wire, and I wanna say it was a good three feet of wire. And I wanna say this was also, yes, it's 30 gauge wire. So I took a good portion of this. I found halfway in the middle of this, and then I thread one end through into one of those holes, and then thread the other end through into the other hole. And then this way, once this is attached into your mask, you could go ahead and use this to wrap that wire onto the stick that's going to have or be holding your mask. So right here, I go up and then I go down and underneath the mask and then bring it back up again and so on. And I do that a few different times. Once I have that anchored down really, really well, I tie it off or I try to get the wire so that it's tight enough. I don't have to do anything but start bringing in like my flowers and that sort of thing or even some super glue or even really the liquid polymer um, clay to help anchor this thing onto my stick. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so now that I feel like I've got my mask anchored down pretty good on my stick, I'm bringing in some more of my uh, scrap clay. This has been rolled out on my Atlas pasta machine on a number six setting. You could go on a number four too. It's truly up to you. And I'm just cutting some strips out of this clay. And I'm not using a ruler. I'm not trying to be extra precise. You can, if you want, you can go ahead and measure it out. If you need to use a guide, that's fine. But I really like the randomness. And right here, I'm placing it right around my mask. And then I'm going to have this strip just kind of weave, or I should say curl around the rod that it is, you know, the mask is attached to. When I do this, I really do believe it gives a bit of a Mardi Gras effect. It really does. I mean, you've got this curling clay that goes all the way around down on this handle. And notice here, I pulled off a little bit because I, I thought I have a little bit left. You could go ahead and then attach in another piece and conform it to where you had left off and bring this around and keep going. It really, this little effect is so, it doesn't seem like much, but it makes a huge difference. Now, once I got this strip all the way around, I decided to go back to that point where I had that juncture, where I had laid a little bit of clay over the other piece. And I used my X-Acto knife, just kind of like even it up so it looks like it's nice and uniform. Once I had that done, I'm gonna go ahead and bake this mask. Okay, so this mask is now all baked up and we're gonna bring in some black, and I wanna say this is kind of a matte paint, this is acrylic paint. So it's a flat back black, I should say. But we want that so that we can go ahead and put our really shiny colors onto it. And so I went ahead and I painted up this whole thing as much as I could in my black acrylic paint. And I'll do both sides and I'll even do the stick that it's attached to as well. All right, so once you have your mask all painted up and I trimmed up my bottom here um, just off to the side, you could trim it to whatever you want. Anyways, once you have your, your mask all done up, I'm bringing in my Fine Tech Pearlescent Type Paints. And yes, I couldn't help myself. I love these things way <laughs> too much. And I was thinking between the dark teal and the Caribbean green. I, I just wanted to try those two out. I've been tempted to play with them and I thought this might be a really great place to do so. So I went in here with my brush and I, you know, I just, you don't need a lot. These paints go so far. Holy cow, do they go so far. And I love that. So I started with the dark teal and I kind of liked it, but when I put that Caribbean green on, it's like, oh yeah, that's what we want. I want a little bit of that brightness. You know, I tried a little bit more and I thought, nope, 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 nope. The Caribbean green, definitely. And it just shimmered and shined. I absolutely loved it. Okay, so here I built up my um, Fine Tech paint on the mask just a little bit, and you can really see the shine. I just... I can't get over this. They, they, they look so great. When you put them in the light, depending upon your angle or whatever, they do exactly what you want them to do. They give you that really extreme shine and you get that variation to it too. Now, this being said, also, once this is dried, it does not rub off. You know, I, I love that part of it. It doesn't rub off. Now, I had also some color shift paint, and this was an aqua flash. I thought, let's go ahead and use this, and I'm going to, I wanted to see what it would look like on the rod and how it would react, you know, in, you know, kind of in juxtaposition to the mask. I wanted to see if there was a, a big difference or not. And it really surprised me because I really thought, okay, I want to go completely into the fine tech, but this aqua flash really did surprise me it it there's a at one angle it's very dark dark blue kind of a and i really liked that especially when it was up against this really kind of bright teal 
it, I, I loved the combination. So I thought we're gonna go ahead and keep it. Now I did not paint the back of the mask. You can go ahead and do that and you can paint it either with the fine tech or with your color shift, whatever you wanna do. You don't have to strictly keep it black like I did here. So once I got this mask all you know painted up, I went ahead and I got one of my black and white stacks and I decided to go ahead and cut some checker from it. I ran it through my pasta machine on, I wanna say it was a number four setting. You could probably go thinner, but I four is pretty good. I went through four and then I just started cutting, you know, just pieces so I get that checker look. And then I used super glue to put this down. However, that being said, yes, you can use your liquid Sculpey to attach it into your mask as well. Now, I know many of you are saying, wait a minute, did she say liquid Sculpey? <laughs> Has she come over to the dark side? <laughs> and maybe in this case I have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can use liquid Sculpey to attach this into your mask. Yes, I am using Sculpey, or I should say super glue here, but old habits are hard to break. <laughs> so, and the other thing here too is this is not jewelry. This is a mask. So, if even if I'm using super glue here, it's fine. However, I do have to say I do like the idea of using the liquid Sculpey because it doesn't adhere down right away like my, my super glue can, okay? Uh, that also being said though, and I'm gonna be showing it later on, there is a reason why I've gotten so used to using my super glue versus using the liquid Sculpey. There are cases in which the, the super glue works a little bit better. And actually, there are cases in which the opposite is true as well. All right, so now let's move into the main part of this mask, and that is creating the flowers for it. So right here, I'm starting to create one of my roses. And if you guys really want to find out how I form my roses and so on, if you go back into the channel's history, I have a video on roses, just them themselves. So you can go ahead and watch what I do there. So anyways, I'm creating my rose here. I'm gonna bring that together. And then once I do, I'm gonna put some green around the bottom, and then I'm gonna create this into a rose that has a bit of a stem. When I finish that up, I'm also gonna bring in a fan folded, uh, a fan folded Skinner Blend cane of magenta and yellow. Now you're gonna notice here, I'm taking that rose that I just created, and I'm going to wrap this around onto the mask. So the rose will go ahead and lay nicely right on the top of the mask, and then that stem will, go, will wrap around following the ribbon area on the stick. Now this rose will actually be kind of the basis in which all my other flowers will kind of come off of, if you will. Right now I'm creating another rose, and then once I get this rose done, I'm gonna break up that whole rose theme with some of my make-believe flowers. And so I'm gonna be using that fan-folded Skinner Blend cane of magenta and yellow. I'm gonna cut slices, and then I'm gonna use my needle tool to drag up the middle to create the petals. I'll have about three of them together, and then I'll put like a pointed center in the middle of those, and then I'll add that into this design. I'll also add in some of my green leaves. But from here, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys watch my hands talk as I put this floral combination onto this mask.
Okay, so to cap off both ends of the stick here, or the handle I should say, I took some more of that scrap clay of mine and I'm just kind of putting this bulbous thing on the top. I'm going to then attach in some kind of larger oh, jewelry piece into the mask and that way then it'll really give it a neat dynamic. I'm also going to do the same thing down at the bottom where the end of the handle is. Okay, so here I brought in some old um, earrings that I'm not going to use. I'm just not going to wear them. So I thought this is a great way to put it into this mask. And if you have old jewelry, this is a great way to use it. You can bring it into the mask and really highlight it and make it into something you really will enjoy. So right here, I'm bringing in another leaf. I'm just going to cover up. I'll have that nice jewel right on top. And then I'll take the other one and I'll put it down at the bottom of the handle. Once I have that done, I'm going to come in with some more metal filigree pieces and some more wire and then whatever else I might need to go ahead and finish up the floral part of this design. When I have that all together, I'm going to then bake this thing for about seven to 10 minutes and then pull that out and then we'll add in the final details to this mask.
Okay, so now that this mask has been baked, okay, we're gonna go ahead and add in some more pieces to it and also paint up the very, uh, the scrap clay on the top and the bottom of this mask. Now, once I have that painting done, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue in with my super glue some of the jewelry pieces. I'm also going to take some 22 gauge silver wire and I'm gonna create a tiny loop and I'm gonna twist the two ends together. I'll cut off the excess and I'm gonna bury this back behind all of the floral combination near the mask. I'm doing this because I want to add in a feature of hanging chain to this mask. It, it, to me, it just gives it just, oh, a really beautiful look. And it's something I definitely recommend you guys trying when you build your own masks. All right, so I had a gap here I needed to really fill in because I'm putting in that little loop and where it hangs down, you could see everything. So we don't want that to happen. So I went ahead and added in another leaf and another little black ball. I'm gonna go ahead and use my knitting needle and make some little indents on it. Turned it into a teardrop there, pushed it in, got the ball. Once I have that in place and I'm gonna to start to curl up my wire and all of that, I'm going to use my liquid Sculpey to make sure it's all adhered into place. Okay, so I thought I'd try this out and see how it would work. So now we're gonna start finishing up this mask and the mask has been baked yet again. Okay, so about, about seven to 10 minutes yet again. And I'm gonna bring in some of my chain and I'm gonna hang it from the little loop that I had inserted into the mask itself. But before I go ahead and do that, I'm gonna take my wire cutter, I'm gonna trim up my wire, I'm gonna to start to curl this wire up on the top and the bottom of the mask. I'm now going to start bringing in some of my chain and with a jump ring in mind, I'm going to go ahead and put strands of chain on that jump ring and then that particular piece of chain that's going to be hanging down will hook into the back of this mask. From this point on, all I'm gonna be doing is adding in a few more rhinestones, some pointed back rhinestones into that little black ball right there, and then also adding in some rhinestone chain around the main part of the mask. So right here, I went ahead and I added in another little pointed teardrop at the very corner on the other side of the mask. I wanted to add in a feature there because it was just kind of plain in my mind. So I will eventually go ahead and bake this whole thing yet again, about seven minutes, 
and then I'll come back in and put some more rhinestones into those little indented areas on that teardrop. So this is the second mask that I created that I wanted to kind of feature in this video. And I'm just going to be doing a little bit of talking in this area. I'm going to let you guys really eventually just watch my hands talk as I put this thing together. I went ahead and I had some other clay kind of left over and I thought to really kind of figure out what color I wanted to use. It's kind of a nice way to swatch out a little bit of your paints to figure out if you really like that one or if you like something else. So I had the acrylic, I had like a, another color shift acrylic over here that I thought I'd try. And then I put that down on the black, um, you know, my black swatch right there. And then I brought in, of course, my fine tech. And of course I went with that. <laughs> I just thought, no, I'm going to do the fine tech. And I thought, and I even tried the acrylic on the handle, but eventually it just wind up being where I really loved the fine tech watercolor paints and I just used them throughout this mask. So like I said, I'm going to be doing more of the flowers and all this kind of thing on this second mask. I'm going to be bringing in a turquoise and white um, fan folded cane. I'm going to use that here. I'm going to use a little bit of my lavender in here on this piece. I'm also going to bring in a cane. Now this cane I have not actually shown how to create on my channel. But if you really want me to go ahead and show how to do that particular one or something similar to it, let me know in the comments and I'll kind of keep that in mind and say, okay, <laughs> this is something I have to address <laughs> and I'll go ahead and work on a video for that. Otherwise from here, I'm just going to go ahead and let you guys watch my hands talk as I complete up and create this second mask.
So the one last thing I want to mention here in this video is I used the liquid Sculpey again to kind of seal in some of these areas back here. Now this was why I don't care for it all the time. When I went to go bake this thing, the translucent did not, it wasn't clear. And I had to go back in and kind of take out some of that clay because it had all globbed up. Okay. When I use my liquid super glue, it goes into the cracks and creases and you don't see it. It absolutely disappears. So in that regard, there are times in which absolutely use your liquid Sculpey. I think the jewelry is a good idea. Use it there. But in some big projects where you might have an exposed area like I kind of have here and I didn't really want all that extra translucent clay, maybe opt for the super glue instead. So just keep that in mind when you're creating these projects. But again, here I'm using that liquid Sculpey and you can see it right on that slice and then attaching it in. This is a good way to use it. So you might want to go ahead and experiment, but there are times for super glue and then there are other times where your liquid Sculpey really works great. Okay, so my masks, I could have left them in a three-dimensional state where I could just have them in some kind of vase somewhere or whatever, but I had prepped a board here. I had painted it with some acrylic paint. I even used some Posca marker on a little bit of it, and I decided to use my masks as part of this framed piece. It was kind of a nice way to get it up out of the way too. <laughs> if I'm really being honest about it, yeah. So it was just kind of a fun project to play with. Uh, you know, again, I just took some of my board that I usually use when I'm creating my Zentangle on boards and stuff like that and created a clay piece there and then just had some fun gluing my masks into place.
So this was the end result of placing my masks onto this prepped board I had already made up. I really enjoyed it in this format, but you can also have it in a 3D, just standalone kind of mask all by itself. Please use this for study and reference. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.